What's up, guys? Scar here from the Scorey Sports here with Matt from Team Liquid. After a very recent loss against TSM, how is your prep go like going into this series? I know you guys must have prepped very extensively for this matchup. Um, to be honest, I don't think we like over prepped at all for TSM. I think the way the week went, we were just um, yeah, we were just practicing at the pace that we could go. Um, what I mean by that is just there was a lot of like uh, struggle, just uh, like throughout the week, just trying to make sure we're at our peak readiness for this weekend. And yeah, there was like some frustration not being met, I guess. And we ended up not over prepping for TSM. Like I'm sure some people might imagine when you're playing against TSM, but I think we all had the mentality going into today with it's very winnable. I think if we're gonna show up on stage. We're gonna take the the set, but in game one it was pretty unfortunate uh, miscommunication, and then after that counter gank we ended up just uh, yeah getting smashed <laughs> that game one, and then um, for game two I think it was a lot closer. So I think if we had three of the game twos, it could have easily won our way. Uh, let's talk a little bit more about the game one. So game one, you talk about the counter gank. I uh, kind of led you guys to have like almost a 50 CS deficit on your AD matchup. Uh, what happened there? Uh, so you're talking about game one? Yes. Oof, just miscommunication about how we were going to play out the gank. And yeah, I guess we weren't really on the same page. And then it ended up being we got counter ganked, we died. And off of that death, uh, we didn't have many options to like continue playing in terms of like getting a lead back. So we had to play from behind throughout the entire game. And yeah, it just didn't work out. OK, OK. I can understand that for game one. Let's talk about game two, especially the draft. You guys. Double band supports. I thought that was super interesting. What was the strategy kind of going into that? Uh, I mean, I think for the draft, we weren't really preparing for that. It's just how it kind of went on stage since we weren't expecting them to ban Braum. Uh, it ended up being like a, a put together strategy that if we just ban these champions, I'll be able to get a, a good matchup while we're getting the good trade and draft. I definitely do believe game two, we did have the better drafts. It's just. The way, yeah, the, the way we ended up playing with our lead, it didn't convert too much. So, I think a lot of the game two struggles was in-game lack of coordination because even though we got party, we didn't exactly turn that into uh, getting a lead. Uh, so, can you explain that a little bit more? So, I understand you guys got priority, uh, Balan. You guys hated the level one was super cool by you guys. You guys hated, uh faked out the one v two, chunked out double, actually killed them before he, the first wave crashed to his tower, and as well as Darlex snowballed the other side of the map. So I imagine that you guys would get one side of the map a lead and then run with it. Like, why weren't you guys kind of able to do that? Uh, yeah, I think it's just a lack of real, I guess, game plan that we had because a lot of the lead that we could have taken would have been off of getting priority and then snowballing off of making big macro plays. And then it ended up just, uh, I don't think we, yeah, we were just not quite there on, on the same page. and. Uh, I don't think it's any singular person's problem. It's just, yeah, it's like a team problem we're working on, and we still have some time. So I don't, I'm not too worried about how we'll play from here until playoffs. It's just we got to take our time well and be able to prepare for playoffs. All right, all right. What do you take away from this series, man? You guys did, did lose, unfortunately, but like, what's the biggest takeaway? I think the takeaway is that we definitely have the underlying like base knowledge to play against TSM. Like, we're not completely outclassed at all. It's just the level of decision making that we're able to make in game just hasn't been uh, yeah, acceptable. It's just we really need to step up our game as a team and individually. And if we meet those two goals, I don't see how any other team could stop us. I want to ask because it's very hard to really dig in on this from the outside looking in. Any of the casual viewers or even me, how do you exactly do you make individual decision making better or team decision making better? Uh, I think that comes from just scrims. I think the main goal of scrims is to, one, uh, improve as a team, but two, to improve individually. And I think uh, sometimes we were just not improving in what we need to improve on. Like sometimes uh, in scrims, I think for most teams, they'll be practicing one thing really hard, and it ends up that's not what win, wins or loses the game. And for us on stage, what really came through was our macro and yeah, we weren't able to win the game off of our macro alone, and that's what really yeah made us lose. Uh, I haven't ever interviewed you throughout the whole split, so I don't exactly know how TL's macro works. Uh, are you the main shot caller of Team Liquid? Does everyone feed you information? How exactly does that work? 
Uh, I think we made the, the decision a while ago for Dardex, and Stardex is a very um, he's a very knowledgeable leader. Like he knows so much about the game. Uh, from his point of view, he'll be able to get a bunch of information, make the most decisive call, and that's like the real quality of an in-game shot caller is just being able to assess what information is given to him and make a decisive call in that moment. And yeah, we made the decision that Dardock's definitely the, the best person to have that responsibility. And uh, I guess you could say he's like the, the main go-to uh, in-game shot caller. All right, last thing I want to ask. Uh, you have ob obviously have extensive history with Piglet and extensive his history with Fabi as well. How is it like playing with Fabi now that after so long? Do you feel like you've taken a lot away from being able to play with Piglet and been able to utilize it to make your bot lane deal even better? Um, I think what knowledge I gained from Piglet is like, it's like invaluable. Like, I really value what I learned from Piglet, but uh, stylistically, Fabian and Piglet don't share that many qualities, I'd say. The things that Piglet is good for, uh, Fabi can either meet or is just slightly uh, less as good as Piglet. And a lot of what makes Piglet and Fabi different is the experience and just knowing what to do, when to do it. and the consistency with that. So playing with Fabi, I need to be able to take more of a leader role. I need to really shift my play style from just following Piglet around to making my own decisions and making sure my team is in the best position to carry. All right. Is there anything you'd like to say to your fans out there who might be a little bit disappointed in the game today? Mm, I, don't, I mean, I think for my real fans, just keep it real. And then for the fake fans, I mean, you can just keep doing whatever you're doing, I don't really care. But for the real fans, I mean, like, the same people who don't really care what the result is, they're just cheering us on. Like, damn, those, those are pr some pretty cool guys, and I really appreciate them. One of the top supports in North America, uh, this is Matt, and I'm Scar from the Score Esports. You can find more content online and on our mobile app. Thank you guys. Hope you guys have a nice day.